The Small Business Show, episode 209 for Wednesday, February 6th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. The show that's by four and you got it about small business sponsors for this episode include express VPN at expressvpn.com slash SBS. We'll tell you a little bit later about why you want to go there and what you're going to get for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, where we actually got some snow today in the Bay Area, <laughs> this is Shannon Jean. How I, are you? <laughs> I, I'm good. I heard about that. It's the end of days, man. <laughs> strange, strange things out here. Yeah, that's very odd. I yeah. Mean, we get snow up in Tahoe, which is a few hours away from us, but uh, usually not down here in the and near the ocean. So that's pretty yeah, cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's freezing. So I got my heater on today. So if you hear that in the background, you'll know, which is oh, highly yeah. unusual. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. We've actually had, cool. I, I was joking yesterday that it went from zero to 60 here in a week because wow. last week it was below zero and yesterday it hit 60. So there you go. That's yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's good stuff. Ooh, that's, that's that changed, causes right? avalanches in Colorado though. Uh, so I don't know that that's yeah, cool yeah. here, but yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. When you come down the hill to go into, to, South Lake Tahoe, where we go a lot. Yeah. There's this huge uh, structure, and I've only seen this a couple times, but they they open these big doors and they have some sort of giant, you know, gun or sonic. I don't know what it is, but they blast the side of the mountain to cause the avalanche to get the snow, you know, to kind of settle down. And uh, I'm always I always tell my kids that, and they didn't believe me for a long time until they saw it. That's so, really smart. You know, the avalanche yeah. is going to happen, so let's make it happen yeah. when we can yep. monitor and protect for it. Huh. Yeah. That's close interesting. The road. Yeah, yeah close that road. They blast it. You know. There's a business lesson in there somewhere, man. Yeah. Y- yeah you well, know, preparing, preparing <laughs> for a disaster. Well, or if you know, like, I mean, like, like anything, right. You know, you have a server that runs all your stuff. Do you want to wait until it dies or do you want to like replace it? Either way, yeah. you have to go through the pain of, you know, and the time of reconfiguring or paying someone to reconfigure and do all this stuff and migrate all your crap over and all that stuff. And it, it's your choice. You wait until you have to do it by surprise one day or do you, you know, take a look and learn the cycles and be a little proactive on it. Right. Like, I mean, there's lots yeah. of examples like that, but that's that's yep. an easy, that's that's one that's on my mind. So there you yes. go. Yeah. yeah. And you probably uh, have to get hit once maybe yep. twice uh, with the, the disaster version versus the planning version before yeah. you start thinking, Hey, put that on the calendar <laughs> to, to check these things and, uh, and, and figure that, that, uh, that stuff out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty interesting, yeah, yeah. but you know, uh, it, the thing about it is it's, you know, we're talking about like the weather because we're a couple of old, getting older here. I always yes. say I'm not going to talk about the weather because it's such an old man thing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things always change at zero to 60. Uh, you know, we were wearing shorts out here last week. And, you know, t- t- we always talk about it here on the small business show that change, you know, you, you have to embrace it here. It's the only constant thing that's going to happen with your business is constant change. change is here to stay. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you can't fight it. And, uh, one of the things that happens with your business is that it, it goes through cycles in it, in its lifetime and you need to adjust to those cycles because you know, that, that change is coming and you have to adjust your attitude, your, your management style, the activities that you, that you take. So I thought it would be a, a good uh, thing to discuss on today's episode is, you know, some examples of what these cycles are and how that may impact uh, what you're doing with your business. I'm in. Yeah, man. You're, yeah. Awesome. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I was doing a little research. I was looking up and, uh, I'm not a big fan of consensus cause I don't, I don't believe it a lot or I've kind of gone against it and been successful uh, with many things, but there's tends to be like four or five, you know, different types of cycles that they talk about, you know, startup or launch growth, uh, peak maturity, and then, one hopefully you won't hit, but is decline. Um, I think it, you will hit decline. Like you have to expect I mean, eventually. that. Yeah. yeah, we've done it. I mean, we've done it with businesses that we've run together. I mean, and, it's a normal. And, and I've I've it. done it with businesses that, that that we haven't owned together too. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, like that's a normal thing. And I I think the that's a good point. That's the good point. trick yeah. with decline is 
you have to compete against yourself, right? And yeah. and sometimes that means pivoting your business, right? And letting yes. one side of your business, yes. you know, decline while you're growing another or it's wow, the entire business is declining. Okay, you know, recognize that. Don't put your head in the sand and Yeah, for sure. and accept that okay, like we're declining. Do we accelerate like, you know, to the point with the avalanche? Do we make the avalanche happen now so that we don't waste a lot more time and money and just kill this thing off? Like, do we see a future here? Or if we don't want to just kill it off quickly, what's the future look like? Because we can't just ride the same train we're on. Uh, it's, yes. it's, you know, we know where that's going. So let's change course. Let's build new track, you know, whatever. Yeah, analogy I, I love use. that. And yeah, and yeah the, the, your, fir- your first part, we were like, okay, well, we're seeing decline in these areas of our business. And yeah. we're going to talk a little bit more, a little more about that versus, Hey, the, the whole thing is, you know, tanking and, and, and going away. But, uh, I, I, yeah. And I do value that. And I see that, you know, I have this overly optimistic streak that usually helps me, but sometimes can hurt well, me too. Well, that's the, the problem. Way. I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah you have <laughs> yeah. to, you have to yeah, temper yeah. that optimism with reality sometimes. You, yeah. You just, you do. Right, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 But you it's can be optimistic sure. in a decline. You can say, oh, okay, yeah. I accept that the business is declining, but yes. I have this great idea and this is what's going to save us, you know, and then, yeah. and well, then you're yeah, writing your own story. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that's great. And the one thing I noticed when I was looking at these different cycles and and research papers and on the web and all that kind of stuff, there is no cycle that says idea or talk, you know, and and what what I realized that is what we say here all the time. It's like, you really don't have a business without action, right? If you match your ideas with action, that's how you create a small business you know, that, that could morph into a a large business, but unless that action part of, uh, you know, the magic dust gets sprinkled on your, your talk over beers or, or whatever your ideas are, because, you know, Dave and I hear these ideas all the time and it's fun and it's great to chat about them, but you know, one of Dave's phrases, you know, your idea is only as uh, worth uh, the dollar amount of the bill that you write it on, you know, the hundred dollar bill. You want a hundred dollar idea, put it on a hundred dollar bill. That's it. Yeah. 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 So I really like that because I was like, great. Okay. So we don't have to, you know, have that. Um, But, you know, let's start with the, you know, launch uh, and talk about, What's going on at, you know, at this phase, it, it's exciting time. I mean, maybe terrifying, depending upon your, your, uh, uh what, what kind of risk you like to handle, but you know, you're sure you have a great idea, you, you know, you're going to get things started. You're taking some action, which is awesome. This, this is often where people fail right out of the gate because they don't realize you need to get through the gate and, and to start taking action, you know, start putting it maybe a little bit of money. Um, I, I heard a comment earlier this week, or I read a comment and he was up on LinkedIn where a, a business advisor was talking about where people often fail. And, and lots of people, when they're trying to get started, they focus on, okay, I need to go raise some money, even just a small amount of money, yeah. 2000, 5,000, 20,000. And this, this consultant's comment was, well, why don't you take it out of your savings? Well, why don't you go get a home equity loan from your house? And, and if you're not willing to risk that small amount right now, what makes you think someone else is going to risk that on you, you know, on your idea? And you're going to have to convince them. So I thought that was really powerful because that is really true is so many people are, are, you know, trying to start things and not looking for money. It's like, well, you need to see if you can get started with a little bit of money. Um, but if you take some action, just that's awesome. You know, you've, you've got through the gate, you're a risk taker, you're the cheerleader, you're motivating either other people or yourself. And you're also trying to figure out logistics and accountability. I mean, there's a lot of hats you have to wear at this stage and, and it's fun and it's, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, this is where you, if you have your partners, you can start creating a working agreement that we've talked about here on the show um, or even just for yourself. You know, the working agreement is kind of a casual business plan. Um, and I'm going to have an article up on the website here in the next uh, couple of weeks, a, a little bit more about the working agreement. Uh, and, and then, you're going to start marketing, you know, getting things out, building your, you know, customer base, starting, you know, growth. It's super fun. The sky's the limit. You know, y- this is where you're creating your own reality, which we talk a lot, uh, uh, you know, about on the show. And I think this is a, this is probably one of the funnest times of, uh, you know, the business cycle, in my opinion. I, I agree. I, I, I think you yeah. need to be careful 
to take the right action. There, are, there yeah, is the fun yeah. action, right, where you're just sure. brainstorming and all that. And and that, like like you said, that's cool. But don't like, for example, don't get so lost in. Well, we need a formal business plan, and so right. we're going to dedicate six weeks to really like putting that together. And man, that's what we need to do. And it's action, and I can log yeah. hours. No, no, that working yeah. agreement is often the only business plan your company will ever have. I was going to say need it often. <laughs> you don't even need that. That's right. But yep. it is a helpful thing, especially if you've got partners to just kind of make sure you're all literally on the same page beyond that. Let it go. Just, you yeah, know, move on. Agree. Yep. You're, you're, everybody knows what they're accountable for. That, that's a great thing about the working agreement. It just kind of lets it, you know, gets it out there. You can come revisit it if you need to, and you can update it as time goes on or yeah. if you add partners or things doing it. And eventually it could morph into, you know, your business plan, but it just kind of happens organically, you know, yeah. naturally versus, you know, I, I I talked to a, 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 you know, a new business owner not too long ago and he was convinced that, okay, I'm almost done with the business plan. I got to go send it to my attorney. And I was like, oh man, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I, I just think those two things, your attorney's not a small business owner and and yeah, it's great. You're going to be super safe, but at this point you need to be hustling. What, what and, are you? Yeah, um, exactly. You just got to yeah, hustle. Yeah. yeah so that, I, I, I will encapsulate it by saying, get on the same page and then dispense with the paperwork. Like yes. be, to be done, make sure you're on the same page and then good. Great. We know what we're doing. Let's actually go do it. And that's let's it. do it. Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really good. So, you know, and then the next one is you, you, you got things working out. You, you're making progress. You've got your product or your idea, your service, whatever it is. And then the, the growth phase, you know, you got things off the ground. You're starting to see some revenue. Maybe it's small, but that's okay. Uh, you know, you have a viable business. Awesome. Congrats. You know, that's, it's a huge thing. Again, it's a big step that the funnel just continues to get narrower and narrower here because there's lots of people that fall in love with the fun part of launching a business yeah. and never get past that to uh, uh, letting it get grow and get a little bit older. They always just want to run to the next idea and get it off the ground. And then it kind of peters out. And that so, actually can be fine if you're the type of person that can attract either a partner or yeah, a team people. that can yes. take the business that started with your idea and go and make something of it like that. That's fine. But there's a lot of self-awareness involved in that. Right. And you, yeah, you need to, really good. yeah, you just need to know, Oh, is that me? Okay. If so, then let's do that. Yeah. And we're, I yeah. think if you're someone who's starting a business, you have some level of that in you uh, regardless. Now, it yeah, might, it, you know, but but it's not, we're not all at the same level. Some people are, you know, it's like, well, it's going, we just got our first customer. Cool. What's the next thing I can do? Okay. Like that's extreme, but, th but there are people like that. Know yourself and, you know, get yeah. others involved sooner or later, depending on who you are and how you do things. That's all. Yeah. And, and the sooner you realize that, the yeah. better. Uh, and if you, then you tell people like that, Hey, I'm really good at this part, but I'm not good at setting up systems and you know the back office or the warehouse or whatever you know and and, and that's okay like you yeah. say that that's fine but it's not okay if you don't have a uh, that other structure in place, whether they're employees or partners, you don't always need a partner, but you're going to need to bring in some people that have that experience and that are maybe passionate about logistics or passionate about, uh, you know, developing a Kanban system <laughs> for your warehouse yeah. or whatever it is uh, it, that, that that's important. Um, I think I think, you know, having an operations person or it's someone who thinks about that stuff and and can implement that kind of stuff is vital. If that's you, yes. great. If it's not you, find someone and probably if, partner with them for life. But yeah. you know, find somebody because that's what it takes to actually make it happen. It ideas, as we said before, are fantastic, but you you need to keep doing things at your company and you need to be efficient about those things. And so you need that ops person. Yeah. Or if you, like you said, if you're the ops person, then you need that's to go great. find this, the crazy sales guy yes. that's constantly trying to come up with new ideas and marketing and all that, that stuff. So, I, I, you know, identifying your personality and is, you know, we could probably do a whole other show on that, uh, you know, about wh who are you taking time to identify that before we get started and looking who, how do I fill the holes with who I'm not? 
you know, I think that's, I think that's great. Um, you know, so you're the thing. Hey, about, hey, hey, the, I'm going to yeah, stop go you right there, my friend. Yes, sir. You because I want to take a minute here and talk about our first sponsor, which is ExpressVPN. Now, right on. As a small business owner, you are going to be out and about. You're going to be certainly, hopefully, some time in either your office, maybe even your home office. But lots of stuff is going to happen on the road, in coffee shops, in airports, where you're going to be connecting to the Wi-Fi of all of these places, and you have no idea. A, who's managing that Wi-Fi, and B, who else is on the Wi-Fi that can see your traffic? Always remember, if you are connected to a Wi-Fi network that didn't require a password, your data is not encrypted on that Wi-Fi network. That's just how Wi-Fi works today. ExpressVPN can help you here because what ExpressVPN does is it creates an encrypted tunnel that starts at your computer or your phone any device you've got that can get on Wi-Fi, they've got an app for it and tunnels out of the network that you're on. So the only thing people can see is this encrypted stream of data going to ExpressVPN. They can't tell what websites you're connecting to. They can't tell your passwords. They can't see any of that. They just know, ah, that person is protected by ExpressVPN. I will move on to the next. That's what you want. And don't just take our word for it. ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar. And it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, right? It costs less than $7 a month to do this. Securing and anonymizing, easy for me to say, your internet browsing by encrypting your data. And it hides your public IP. So not only do the people local to you not know what you're doing, but... When you go connect to your bank or perhaps anywhere else, they don't know you're connecting from a coffee shop. They don't know you're connecting from an airport. They just know you're coming through ExpressVPN, and that's what you want. So you can protect your online activity today and get three months free with a one-year package at expressvpn.com slash SBS. This is a deal just for you, our listeners expressvpn.com dot com slash SBS for three months free with your one year package. One more time, expressvpn.com dot com slash SBS. And our thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. good stuff, man. It is good stuff. Is, I lo I'm loving yeah. it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It is a great way they can do that too, and get that protection. Okay, so we're we're talking about growth here, uh, and the the one thing I I also want to caution you is is not to fall in love with the numbers too much at this point because you know your sales will, you're going to have the hockey stick right things are growing so rapidly but don't forget you started at zero. And, you know, I always see these like the Inc. 500, Inc. 5000, look at their gr their growth is 5,000, you know, whatever, t increased uh, 1,600%. Yeah. Low. Okay, I get it. And that's awesome. And you should, you know, here I am always talking about how you have to kind of uh, program Celebrate your brain. Your and, yep. Yeah, I'm all about that. But just don't get so enamored to it that you, you know, uh, you don't think, okay, can you, are you going to get 1600% growth next year? You know, are you going to start thinking about that? You're starting at zero. Uh, you know, don't fall in love with that number too much. Uh, it, it, on the same side, you need to really watch your cash flow because growth is awesome and it's, you need it, but it can be very expensive. And that's, you know, so many companies run out of cash at this stage and you wind up either, you know, you can fall apart right here or you can have to go out and get outside investment. You know, we don't talk about, uh, you know, venture capital really on this show. It's not really the demographic that we that we are, uh, you know, that we working serve. with here. Yeah. Yeah. We don't say we're small business, you know, folks that are just grinding it out, bootstrapping typically. Um, and so if you run out of cash here, you're you're going to have to look for someone else. And uh, when you're out of money is not the time to be asking people or the bank or other investors for money. You lose your leverage. Um, I have a I have a rule for myself. I love to look at the P&Ls, right, I, where I can yeah. see I'm turning a profit, all that stuff. I do not let myself load that report in my accounting software until I look at my cash flow report. 
And yeah, my cash powerful. flow report also includes seeing my da- my bank balance as of, you know, right now. But it's also looking at, OK, what's our cash flow been like for the last month compared to the month before? If you can if you're in a business where you can do those sorts of predictions based on invoicing and that sort of thing, look ahead at your cash flow, then allow yourself to bask in the glory of the numbers that you can <laughs> yeah, manipulate yeah. to sure. make your because you, that's the thing. You can make your P&L look really good. And and that's cool. And, and it is a valuable thing. But don't let that mislead you. Let it let it inspire you. Sure. But don't let it mislead you. You need to be realistic about your cash. And that's something yeah, I learned from sure. from my good friend Shannon Jean here. So, uh, well, I, I always look at the bank every day. Yeah. <laughs> that's my first thing in the morning. I have to get up, have coffee and I hit all the bank accounts, all the yep. PayPal accounts, because I have been there where, you, you know, someone has when I was young, much younger and somebody came and said, hey, there's nothing in the bank. I was like, wait, how oh. can that be? We look at the profit. <laughs> look how much we made last month. And you're yeah. like, no, no. Yeah. Especially no, no. if you. Yeah. Especially if you're in the inventory business, which I've been in, you know, pretty much my whole life. Uh you really can get behind the eight ball there. So the the start of every day for me is a, a around the world trip, uh, bank accounts and PayPal and whatever other, you know, financial stuff we're using. I always take a look at it. It's really important. It's super important. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's a, yeah. and it, and this way you're not uh, going to ever lose sight of that. If you're seeing yep. that bank balance every day, then you're going to know it. And, you, and there's no way you're going to get caught off, uh, you know, blindsided or at least, Far less of an opportunity yes. to get caught blindsided. It it may still happen. It does. Trust me. And, and, yeah. and I found, yeah, I found it useful to, on, on two fronts. One, it allows you to inflate uh, the balloons of people that may be down. Maybe their department's not doing good. You can go in and go, hey, you know, I checked the bank this morning. We're doing pretty good. You know, we, we I know maybe you're having trouble here, but we're, the cash is still coming in. That's something to be happy about. Or it also allows you to pop the bubble that somebody comes and says, we're killing it, man. <laughs> you know, this kind of thing. You can yeah. go, well, yeah. that's great. <laughs> but, you know, in this growth mode, it's really important not to grow just for the sake of growth. Uh, I've done this before too, where you're just like, okay, we grew 1600% last year. Now we have to go 1800 because then I can't tell the story of this climbing hockey stick that I want to tell to everybody. Uh, you, you Now is the time to start thinking about who your most profitable customers are and to, to start thinking about focusing on that niche. Um because there's a next stage that we're going to get to talk about in a minute that that is even going to become more important of who, if, you know, you're where you're at, what customers are really generating the, the most profit for you. And they're going to be with you the longest time. Really yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, no, just like we talked about self-awareness for yourself, your person before self-awareness for what your business is and who your business is and who you serve is equally as important. Yeah. And and that, yeah, that's, that's critical. And, you know, at this stage, you've really become more of a manager than, you know, quote, technician. And I'm not saying that as a technical business, but technician, you know, you were the salesperson, you were the whatever. But now you're really managing your team, uh, working with your staff to oversee things. You're, you're working less it, this is, you know, from the e-myth, less in the business and more on the business if you've kind of set things up correctly and hopefully you have. And and you need to give up a lot to get to that point. You really have to. And I, I don't, I, you can't overstate that. Um, in order to gain that that freedom to look at the business like from a dashboard level and to be able to see how things are moving, you have to give up a lot. And again, this is another area where small business owners really can have problems with because they never get beyond that, uh, the technician phase of, you know, I'm the guy has to go out every day. I'm the guy that has to, or, you know, per, and when I say guy, I'm, you know, it's yeah. just a uh, gender neutral, whatever <laughs> I say it all the time. I, I'm the guy that has to go make all the sales. I'm the, this, I'm the, that. It, no, you know, it, you're, you're not going to last it. Uh, if you keep doing that, you need to step back Get somebody else, pay somebody at this stage. Maybe you're paying somebody more than you're making. You know, uh, your salespeople should be making tons of money, you know, and and giving good bonuses because they're going to drive all that good business. And you're going to be able to guide them and explain to them why, you know, giant corporation Z, even though they're going to they bring you this huge gross dollar amount, may not be the more pro- most profitable business for you. What is your net 
uh, you know, and, and what is it costing you to manage that relationship? So you, you need to have the, the time and the freedom to look at those uh, customers and decide which ones are really the best for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so then after growth, you know, is this is peak uh, and, and it's not a bad thing thing, but you're kind of at the top of this cycle and it may take you years to reach, uh, but it, it, it comes sooner if you don't embrace change, because if you found your niche and you go, great, we've got it. We found our horse. We're going to ride it, ride it, ride it. If you haven't maybe branched into other areas or developed uh, multiple revenue streams uh, with your revenue stack, uh, it can happen a little sooner. So the longer you focus on one product, one niche without changing, without trying new things, the sooner you're going to hit this peak stage. You're going to see more competition because people are watching you. And if you're successful and you're telling your story and you're building your brand, every people are going to see it and they're going to go, well, there's an opportunity here and I'm better at X or I have a... Uh, my unfair advantage is, is why, and I can save money here and I can sell that product for less or whatever. Um, and that means you're, you're working in less of a niche. You're making less profit, profit on your sales or on your services. Your growth is going to slow. It, you know, your sales may continue to grow, but it's probably going to be at a higher cost. So your profits are going to take a hit and your cash flow, you know, so probably still pretty good because you've, you've generated all this kind of stuff. Um, you, Again, you may have time to embrace change here, but you need to be quick. Uh, and, and the bigger your business has become, I think the harder it is. You know, think about Bill Gates uh, waking up to the fact that you know, hey, this internet thing is is going to be a big deal, and all these desktop apps we're selling are going to be gone someday uh, or changed. You know, turned into subscription models or online. You know, this kind of thing. And he turned the whole they turned the whole company around. But it was a massive wake up call to them yep. that you know, almost cost, you I mean, your business could have. Yeah. They, they gone, arguably waited right? too long to do it, but yeah. you had, but had enough momentum. <clears throat> yes. To carry them through. Yeah. But and, you, and enough powerful, uh, you know, a huge guy, a motivator and someone's clearly that had stepped out and was working on the business. Right. Yes. Um, and uh, it, it's, you know, if you've made it here, you've been an effective manager, you, you're a dashboard person. But now kind of like, you know, Gates did, you probably have to jump back in. You may have to jump into the details to shift the company into new opportunities, you know, new services, new products. And and maybe maybe you've done it along the way. That's awesome. And and to, to Dave's point that he made earlier, as you start to peak in certain channels or vertical markets, maybe you've got other ones coming up and on the up and that's great. And you see Apple do it all the time, you know, where they they make their own products obsolete, right? Um, yeah. And and that's a huge lesson right there. It's like, well, if you don't do it, someone else is going to come along and and do it. And like, you know, we're talking big billionaire companies or trillion companies, you know, like Jeff Bezos says, you know, your margin is my opportunity. And, and no one has proven that more than Amazon because they would just squeeze and, and operate at a loss for years yeah. to get to become the market leader in a, in a certain. Well, and and a certain, mono price is that way, too. Right. They oh, yeah. started in the cable business and they're like, this is crazy. There's way too much margin here. We can <laughs> take those cables and reverse yeah. engineer them, figure out what the benefit is and then go and, you know, uh, love, make yeah. it with the same parts. And now they do it with everything. They do it with screens. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at a mono price monitor right now. Same. You know, I, yeah. I and it's it. fantastic. Uh, yeah. It's the same it glass is. that's used in the Dell one that yeah. costs twice as much. But yeah, I, I want to circle great. back to something you said, which is um, jumping back in. You said it might be time where you have to jump back in and actually, you know, get back into the details. Don't let your ego stop you from doing this. Uh, good point. Uh, you, you know, I have been there and it, it's it, it in retrospect, it's so easy to see how stupid and silly that is. But it's also super easy to see how natural it is. It's like, wait a minute. You know, I've hired yeah. people to do this stuff. I don't need to jump back in. I was smart enough to build this thing and get the no, no. Sometimes you are the best one to get back in and do the work and and retool things and then 
hand that off to your people and, and show them the new way of doing things or the new thing you've added, whatever that is, you've got to And like, I would say, make this a part of your, your culture, right? Where you're just getting back in and doing things. And yeah, all the time. I love that. All that's the time. Such a, that's such a good point. And to, uh, I mean, and if you're not that type of person, you may even have to like, you know, put it on your calendar, <laughs> you know, yeah. every three months or every six months or whatever. It, and not only does it keep you connected, uh, but it also kind of shakes things up and lets people know that, oh, wow, this this person, <laughs> they really do know the business, you know, or they're they're seeing what's going on. They're not just, uh, you know, focusing on this or, you know, promoting the company. You know, they're they're involved in it. I think that's that's a really good point that you make there. Yeah. 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 Love it. So, you know, after this peak things, um, uh, you know, if you don't embrace change and if you haven't been able to kind of shift things, your business is going to mature. And and maybe this is just a, a certain, you know, uh, channel, like I said, or vertical within your company. But that maturity, you know, you're going to start to see revenue decrease. Uh, you know, maybe your profit margin is getting thinner because you did not adapt and you didn't do it. You know, you, things are kind of stag stagnating in, in the business. Maybe you're bored. Yeah, maybe you're maybe it's time for you to do something else. Maybe you're not the guy anymore to to be the leader of of that company. Um, you if you're not paying attention to that stuff, and and I've done it, I will be the you know I have absolutely been in this position before where I thought I could just turn it over and then go do something else because I've done this and it's been you know whatever five years ten years you know and. Yeah. Uh, it, that that stagnation is time to it, it can really wake you up. And I, my comment here is like, you remember change? Uh, if if you can grab it and embrace it like never before, maybe you can still do that. But you might have lost uh, the opportunity. Um, but you, you could try to reimagine your business if you if you haven't yet. Get that cheerleader hat back on. Motivate your team. But I, I, I'm you know the the odds are really against you but you still might be able to do it. I, if you have a story about coming back from that and being stagnant, we would certainly love to hear it. Um, you know, get, get with us at feedback at business or, you know, visit us in the small business support group at business slash Facebook and, and tell your story. And uh, you know, we would, we would love to celebrate that because the next step is, you know, decline. Like we talked about, you didn't listen. You haven't heard this episode <laughs> of the show. Uh, you didn't embrace change. You thought things would stay the same forever. And, and you're, you're hearing from someone that has absolutely done this. Um, your cash cow, cow is about out of milk, you know, terrible, terrible analogy, terrible <laughs> pun. Uh, you, your no, it sales sometimes your, happens. Like it, it does. Yeah. Your it business does. has run its course yeah, on that yeah. course. Yeah. That's yeah, right. that's right. And I have a company right now that, that I've had forever and it, I just see it. And it's because I just don't like I, I'm not into it anymore. And, you know, I had some a, a few good customers and the market shifted. And it's like, ah, I don't know if I have the energy really to jump back in and, and do it. And, and uh, to your point earlier, Dave, maybe that's probably OK. I, I've, I've taken a ton of, you know, uh, money off the table and the company over the years and, and very happy with that. Uh, I have some great relationships, but uh, I, I just don't know if it's if it's worth it. Um, like, you know, sales, profit, cash flow starts declining, you know, and, and, and now it's time. Maybe you think about your options. If you're not motivated, is there can you merge with somebody else that has the energy to take it back to another level? Can you sell it? Um, is there an opportunity for a different type of business owner to come in and and uh, uh, take it on and grow it again. You know, you, you got to look at all these things or is it time just to say, Hey, this was a great company while it lasted. Um, now maybe we should, we should move on. And, yeah. and I think we've both done that, uh, you know, here. And yeah, it's uh, hard to do. You know, I, it, it, I, is. I, it, it, again, it's one of those things you look back and you're like, Oh man, I should have shot that thing three years earlier oh, or yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. but, but it's really yeah. hard because it's to your point, it's the thing that supported you. It supported all these other people that you employed and, you know, it's hard to sit there and say, oh, yeah, it's done. Huh. But that's it's like it. a, it's it's like a child. Yeah. I mean, you gave you gave birth to it. You you fought so hard to grow it and get it going and 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 to, to, you know, carve out that niche. And it, this stuff is not easy. And then, you know, over time you had some success and it became part of your story. And and then, you know, uh, you look at it and go, oh, this is not not the way it used to be and lots of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Lots of stuff changed. It's beyond your control. Entire markets disappear. 
Right. Right. I mean, you know, look at all the businesses that are gone or niches that are gone from uh, because like the smartphone, you know, I mean, who's got an alarm clock, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the the standalone low end camera business. I mean, on and on and on. Um, you, you can look at that. But I think the lesson here is that, again, you know, coming full circle, nothing is going to stay the same. Bad yeah. things don't last forever. Good things don't last forever. The sooner you get ready for change, the more you can adapt more you can take advantage of these business cycles and you know work to uh, uh, avoid this de- this negative decline i mean maybe a natural decline that you have to adjust to maybe maybe sell your company or something and go on and do something else but uh you just want to be ready for it and and talk about it all the time because now you once you've embraced it now you're going to convince everybody else your employees your partner you've got to be talking about change um you know soon as soon as you start have success okay how do we how do we what's the next yeah, thing what's or the how next do we thing yeah yeah how do yeah. we protect this this niche i mean and then at the same time develop you know uh ancillary channels and ancillary uh, different products um but you know i, I love this cycle these all these cycles it, it is it it stretches you and you learn a lot and once you go through them a few times it allows you to be uh ready for each one and have a have a a pretty open attitude, like, okay, this is the normal cycle, this kind of thing. And I would encourage you to, um, to, you know, to think about each one and try to step out and look and see what, what stage we're in. Yeah. Simply most, being aware you know, of what cycle yeah. you're in at any given point in time is probably puts you ahead of, you know, 90% of other business owners. And that's not a bad place to be. Yeah. You got it. And yeah. that action, Folks, remember, there is no idea or talk phase. You are starting. You are getting something going, uh, you know, taking those steps. And uh, that, that's the way you're going to get there. Yeah, the idea gonna, is table stakes, successful. right? Like yeah. you, you have to have the idea, but but it doesn't need to be your idea, right? True. You can look at another business and say, hey, you know, to, to Jeff Bezos point, I can do that better or I can do that in a more profitable way. Or, you know, I can do that and serve a market that they're not serving because that's yeah. not who they're focused at. You don't need to come up with the, the next billion dollar idea. No, 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 what you no, need no. is the next thousand dollar idea. Yeah, and and then you can turn yeah, it into absolutely. a $10,000 idea and, you yeah. know, and then a hundred thousand dollar idea. Right. Like you, you, yep. just do something. And that's what you need that figure out the rest along the way. Do, yeah, do something. Do something. That, yeah. that first thousand bucks. I would argue strongly that that is a more more important than the than the hundred thousand or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the world is full of people that don't want to get off the couch unless it's for big big dollar amounts. And that is a huge huge mistake. If you can develop something that can start generating some money, and and then you can start tweaking it and adjusting it and and putting your foot down on the gas, if you will, and feeding it. That's how you build long term success. Yep. And 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 you may you may hit a peak with one company like, well, you know, this business only generates 10 grand a month. But wow, I only have to spend a little bit of time each day. Now, what other business I can do? And, you know, we're going to talk a lot about the revenue stack uh, later on, you know, uh, the, during this this season of the small business show. And that that is a fantastic way to do it, where you can have these different revenue, uh, you know, streams coming into you. It really can build you into your own solid brand that is ready for these inevitable business cycles and allows you to be really flexible. I, I'm going to I'm going to sort of dig in for a minute here into what you just said. You know, you said, well, this business hit a peak and it only generates 10 grand a month. I know there are people out there that either are just getting started or haven't yet started who say, oh, that would be a dream. Right. Like to have a business that sure, I don't sure. have to do a lot of work at that generates 10 grand a month. Here's the thing. It's really not that hard. You need to be yeah. willing to put in the work. No question. Yeah. But it, all you need to do is worry about how to make a hundred bucks because then you just repeat that and suddenly you're at a thousand and then you're at 10,000. It like this can happen very, very quickly if you're able to be, you know, dedicated and just put in the work. It's really it, when you when you talk about that and it just comes off very casually it's because it is it it's a casual thing with the assumption that you're going to put in the work anyway and that's oh, yeah. how it's going to be yeah it's great yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, uh, the, just that action just do, just 
you know, take action. start to start and, and do something and, and you'll learn right away. Oh, that, you know what? This isn't really going to go anywhere and your investment will be small. Most of it will be time and, and test and see how things, you know, go in it. Now it's never been easier to do this type of thing and grow your own small business. And the, the benefits and, you know, getting you to that part where, you, you know, we talk about the charmed life all the time, you know, the tax benefits, the, the credit card points and the travel benefits and the, I mean, just on and on and on of getting something going, even if it's not your main source of revenue, even if you work for someone else, but you have a side small business that generates a little bit of money, that is a big deal. Totally. Big deal. Yeah. 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 So. Well, thanks for listening to, to us, everybody. We've, you know, love talking about this stuff and we'd love to hear from you. Like I said, feedback at businessshow.co or come share your story at businessshow.co slash Facebook. Absolutely. Come over to the small business support group. Yeah. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Check out expressvpn.com slash SPS. Thanks for living. Thanks for living. Well, thanks for living, but also thanks for listening. See you next week. <laughs>